Hello, my name is Alexandra Thami. I'm with the Lebanese Center for Policy Studies, and I'm here with my colleague Mohamed Hamouda, who's with the Libyan Public Policy Forum. So, Mohamed, from what I understand, last week uh, the Libyan Constitutional Drafting Assembly officially came out with the, what is the, going to be the final draft of the new constitution for Libya, uh, which will be put to a referendum. And I was wondering if you can tell me about its references to natural resource management. Okay, well, uh, Libya, as you know, it's, we are passing through a very uh, a historical moment, actually, which is drafting the constitution, regardless of whatever what is happening currently in, uh, in the Libyan case. So, uh, the, the constitution has um, uh, a very uh, tense and deep conversation about uh, in, in the process of drafting the constitution, actually, within the constitution drafting assembly and within the public. And when it comes to the natural resources, uh, we have a, a, a dedicated article in that, and it, uh, it highlights the ownership of the uh, constitution of the uh, resources in Libya, and this is uh, one of the main and uh, most controversial uh, issues on the natural resources, as uh, as you may know, for example, the Iraqi case or other cases and uh, also uh, some other general uh, principles about uh, transparency of the sector. But I think there is uh, still lots of things that is uh, missing and um, especially like the uh, producing uh, provinces and uh, cities who has been like claiming about their percentage of the revenues. Well, so these are all the issues has been discussing in the constitution. Okay, great. Do you I think that the issue of the producing regions and the various issues around it, is this the biggest challenge facing an agreement over the constitution? Well, I think yes, since uh, the ownership issue, it's, uh, it's not an issue in, uh, really on the Libyan case because okay. uh, it's uh, owned by the uh, population and managed by the state. Uh, but uh, when it comes to uh, revenues allocation or uh, wealth distribution, this is the, the main problem because uh, the producing uh, provinces are the least uh, developed and also okay. are the, the least uh, and they are the most vulnerable actually right. uh, uh, people. So looking forward, how do you see it playing out in a potential referendum or do you think it has a chance to? Well, uh, I think it's, um, Libyans are very excited actually with the, 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 the draft that finally came out and uh, we haven't had the constitution since uh, 53 and it has been amended on the 61. But you know, after the dictatorship of the previous regime, there were no constitution. So uh, no matter what will be inside the constitution, people I think that they will vote yes. But this is where it comes our role. As a, as a civil society and think tanks in order to like uh, enrich their uh, knowledge, to uh, raise their consciousness about all these topics. So we don't regret what we are going to vote for. No. Sounds excellent. Um, what would be a positive policy measure going forward in, in managing the natural resource wealth? Just one example. Well, since we are talking about the constitution, maybe I can um, brought the, the case of uh, Actually, we have to make sure that there is a sustainable development in Libya and we don't compromise the ability of future generation to uh, have a uh, better life and uh, can really get benefit of these resources that we are like just burning out right now. So like uh, including a sovereign wealth fund for a future generation in the constitution instead of letting it to be decided uh, in the parliament or in the laws. It's a positive thing and I think this is uh, one of the uh, recommendations that I would love to, to, to have in the Constitution. Great. Thanks so much, Mohamed, for sharing your insight. It's, it's a very exciting and important time for Libya indeed. And it's been great having you with us. Mm -hmm.